we often tend to believe or think or yes. perceived yes. Uh, important financial individuals, businessmen, yes. like not very spiritual. Yes. Now, with Ludwig, we yes. have a case of a man that is uh, smart when yes. it comes to making money. Yeah, very smart. And uh, but also has a very deep rooted spiritual connection. Yes. Can you please refer to that? Sure. So so Vicky, well, spirit, what does spiritual mean? You know, Vicky has very spiritual. He he often comes to my classes. He's always very busy and he loves life. So I wouldn't say he was the most diligent. <laughs> But neither am I, for that matter. And he definitely loves the Dalai Lama, and he loves. He feels something. There's something real in the Buddhist view of life, and in a way, it, it doesn't require. Tibet House is not a cult, and it's not a religious organization. Actually, it's primarily cultural. But the Tibetan cultural and educational, but culture in Tibet is if you, connected to Buddhism. And Buddhism is spiritual, but in a way, it's not denominationally religious. So Buddhism wants people to be happy. It wants people to understand the world. So it's more educational, actually, than just enforcing belief on people. It doesn't do that. So Vicky has a natural affinity for it. He's probably the rebirth, reincarnation of someone who lived in Asia, whatever. But, 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 and he's, uh, of course, he's a real German, and he's very generous. He has that great generosity that the German people do have. And my wife is half German. I, I like those German people. They, had, they got a bad rap because of Hitler's bad behavior. But, you know, we had Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a Nazi. He's a, a card-carrying Nazi. We have elected him. So uh, the Weimar people were trying to be democratic and do things, and then they got taken over in their economic difficulties, which were inflicted on them very much by a bad end of the World War I uh, uh, negotiation by the British and French a vengeful thing where Wilson couldn't protect them. And so then they, they ended up being like that. But the Jews were otherwise doing really well in Germany. The Jews all spoke Yiddish, is more or less German, because actually they were more generous to them for a, hundred, for a thousand years than the more Latin Romance language people, the Italians, the Spanish, the French, the English. Uh, they were, the Germans were better to them. That's why they were very prominent in Germany. And Yiddish is German. You know? Absolutely. Um, so, so, you're, you're, so, wait a second. So, so, I have, I also myself have a mystical thing about the Germans. My father desperately wanted me to learn German, but I was so born, I was a baby during the World War, so it was hard for me. And I didn't really do well. I was more into the Romance languages and then in the Asian languages. And I need German. And my guru, who was Mongolian, he said, Your future, when you're an old man, you have to teach Dharma in German. And then I've never been able to do it. I had always hoped to go with Viggy. German teacher, when you're old man, and you go. To teach German is what? Who's Dino speaking? Vendai oh, Vendai that's Vendai okay. Vendai. Thank you so much for the commentary. Later, <laughs> Ven Dine. Oh, now it's, it's translating my what I'm saying into German. Thank you. You're wonderful. I love it. That's <laughs> what's her name? Siri. Siri, Siri yes. was, was was recording what I was saying and then translating into German. So you think that Siri is being unfaithful to me? <laughs> No, that's a male Siri. I used to have a female Siri. Oh, and then oh, once yes. I said, please leave me alone type of thing, it sort of every time I was talking and it started interfering with my lecture. And so she left. And then she said, as she left, she said, well, you don't have to be so rude. She actually said, and then later came back as a man, thought maybe I would be, be more polite, you know. And I kind of miss her, but I like him too. He's very, yeah. but sometimes he interferes when I'm talking. Anyway, you can edit that out. No, no, it's okay. It's a, it's a gender fluid uh, watch. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's non-binary, which yes. I think is the best, actually. I think it's very, very, very interesting. The young people now are going beyond gender archetypes and gender stereotypes and male chauvinist domineering business and everything. I think it's really, really good. And I have, that's, some, that's about Buddhism, but I won't launch into that. So, so anyway, so we have this mutual thing, we're both Leos, he's more of a royal Leo, like, what is he, the 18th, I think, they're, they're like the royal 18th, ones, yes. toward the end of the month, they're like, Clinton was the 15th, he's the 18th, Gandhi was the 15th, I'm an early Leo, August 3rd, 
my Leo day is called the day of the dangerous quest. And it's very, like, hardworking. <laughs> Obama was the fourth, you know. But he's, uh, Vicky is the more cool one. But anyway, we have this affinity. And I just want to go and teach Dharma in German. And Vicky could translate for me. He's very spiritual. And he has a good sense of humor. He's a little shy, actually, I think, in some ways. He has a certain shyness about him. But so I don't know if he would function well as a, in that role as a translator, but I would love it if he would. And uh, I was trying to get him to teach me German once when we were in Laos. And he had a business magazine, and I was reading with my attempt at a German accent. And he didn't, you know, he, we didn't have time to really develop that tutor role, which I would like to have with him. But definite spiritual, he definitely is. But really, what is spirituality? It isn't going woo-woo or acting pious or looking like rolling your eyes. Spiritual means being generous. Spiritual means being kind. Spiritual means stand up for the, for the underdog. It means being loving and compassionate and kind and generous and, and ethical. That's what spiritual means. And, uh, it, it, you know, the, we have something called the spirit of enlightenment, which is when a person decides that life is beautiful and good, actually, more strongly than there's horrible mess. There is also mess, but that's a weaker side of it. The stronger side is the goodness of the world. Some theists have that, some non-theists have that. It's a sort of basic trust in the world, actually. It might come from the mother's breast, psychiatrists would say, but it's deeper than that even. That's that mother's breast, if it's good milk, is good, but when you're little. But um, so spirit, the spirit of enlightenment means that you sense that the universe is good, and therefore you sense that there's no limit to how good you can be. And you don't get sucked into this stupid materialist thing that you only exist one life, and then you're nothing, and because that's insane. Nobody can be nothing, because nothing is not there. Nothing doesn't exist. So something is always something else. That's just an obvious thing, actually. Everybody knows it in their bones. And so spiritual means that you contribute to the goodness of the universe. And that is Vicky. And he made great contributions, many institutions and people other than Tibet House. He brought up children. Uh, he took care of all sorts of things. He helps good politics. He's like really wonderful that he and Trixie landed in, and Susan all landed in Thomas Jefferson's town and so on. It's very auspicious. You know, they did, they did a the Ouija board thing, but it took them there. And, uh, you know, that's how they got there. Trixie will tell you the story. They did it over a map, and it went clunk in Charlottesville. And um, so I just love him, that's all. And uh, I wish I knew more details about his youth and his life. You know, I did read Trixie's books, but they're more about her <laughs> than him. But, uh, but, you know, but I get the idea that he had a little difficult childhood, a parent and so forth. He worked very hard. He was always very loyal and friendly to people, and therefore, and he's very smart, and he succeeded. But you know, the Buddhist thing is, by the way, to really succeed in business or anything is, it happens to generous people. And there are even studies that prove that from Wharton School and the famous Adam Grant, great writer. You know, the one who's greedy and kicks everybody out and competes with everybody can short term surge ahead by grabbing other people's stuff, just like a robber can rob a bank and then they get they have some money. But they create such a stress around themselves, long term success they won't have. And the Buddhist theory is that wealth is attracted to generosity. So it goes through you, you know, and then you see where other people need things because you're, you're alert to what they need, and then that makes you find what they need and you become successful. And Vicky is a very much a demonstration of that. And the, and, and the German people, I believe, as a whole, are, are ready to make a great contribution to the world. They are much more, their democracy, their corporate structure, their labor unions and things are much better than the so-called winners of the World War who got into all their elitism and the wealth went to the top and people are really messed up. They broke down the unions, blah, blah. It's a whole story. Um, and um, and so, therefore, that's why I really like to relate in my last decade, if I have one, I'm 81 now, with the Germans. So I still, I, this, I know this is about Vicky, but Vicky, we got to go to Germany together. 
I had hoped maybe Fabi can be my be translate for me, and he can co-teach with me. He can be my shrink too when I get neurotic, and he can shrink the people. But he speaks German well, and I always had hoped that we would all go and spend more time together in Germany, actually. And then my wife can buy me more Trachten, since she is German, half German, Swedish German, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's my thing. So Viggy is great, and he is spiritual, but the, and the spirituality is shown in the generosity, and and the kindness, and uh, and you know, and he and he loves ladies, and that's because he loves life. And that's great. That's spiritual, actually. That isn't something. You, I mean, you can do that in a bad way and be like a bluebeard and hang them up on the wall. But he takes care of people. And uh, that's what's great about him. And that's why we all love Viggy. And the, Viggy is great. And then well, we were so fascinated by Viggy. Talk about spiritual. When you would meet Viggy and you give him a hug or something or shake hands in the days before COVID, then around under this lapel he had one perfume. And around that lapel, he had a different one. And then he had a little handkerchief, and it's because he was a natty dresser, he would have a different one. So he was always, uh, he was orchestrating himself as a sense experience for other people. You know, because he can't smell them all at once himself at the same time. And that's a unique kind of uh, personality that he, that he had, you know. He has. He has. He's wonderful. Okay? I don't know what else I can say. You, Anything you else? You said more than enough. That's fantastic.